Hey everybody, Andrew here. I'm going to show you what to eat before, during, and after your triathlons, specifically half Ironmans. Now, the main focus here is what you're going to eat during the race. Because trust me, after the race, I have no problems getting a big fat greasy hamburger and fries along with a beer. Then at the end, I'm going to point you to a tool that can help you sum up all the foods and all the fuels you have so that you have a clear picture on whether or not your plan is going to work or totally result in disaster, which I've had happen. There's so much confusion out there about what to eat and drink, how much and when, and there are tons of products out there all promising miracles and magic. You don't know what to trust, but it doesn't have to be a big mystery. My first pointer, especially for beginners, is to err on the side of simplicity. Now, if you're not gunning for the podium or world championships, or, or if you're not a pro, then you probably just want to finish the finish line respectably without too much pain. You won't really need to go into too many complex calculations. But if you're like me, and I'm not fast, but if you're like me and you're kind of deep into nutrition and numbers and you really like those calculations, like I do, it can be a lot of fun. And you can calculate all day long. I've done it both ways. I've gone into races totally blind with no clue and uh, I've paid the consequences. But I've also gone into some with rough estimations and done fine. But in my journey, which includes more than 10 half Ironmans, a few full Ironmans, and quite a number of marathons and ultra marathons, I've made all the mistakes. I've finished with severe cramps. I've had that thing where your calf starts flexing like there's an alien trying to break out of it. I've dehydrated to the max, and I've even overhydrated. So, before we get into what you need to eat during the race, let's start with the morning of the race. I like to eat some light breads and lots of water. Don't overeat, and try not to eat too much fiber at this time, like wholemeal foods or too many fruits and vegetables, because this excess fiber may mess up your stomach later on, specifically in the run. I also try to avoid anything too fatty, like eggs, cheeses, and meats, for sure. Two things I like to include in my breakfast are coffee, I usually drink two of them, caffeine's good for you for racing, and sodium. So this is Precision Hydration 1500, this one here is UCAN, and this one over here is Element. Uh, so dump one of those in your water, and you should have some preloading of sodium, and that's a, a, a great foundation before you go out to the swim. But this is in my races, which are almost always in high humidity and heat. If you're in a much cooler climate or you're kind of a low sweater, you may not need to preload any sodium. Some people also avoid dairy at this point in the breakfast, as it may not sit well in their stomachs, uh, but everybody's different. So here's the bottom line with breakfast, and what I'm going to call kind of a secret. Figure out what works for you. To figure out what works for you, eat that same thing in your training months, weeks, days leading up to your race. The same thing you've eaten beforehand. Then, at the race, try to eat that again. That'll give you a proven, no doubt answer as to what you can eat and should eat before you race. Now, typically you'll have at least an hour or two, maybe more, before your swim starts. At this point, depending on how hot the climate is and how well adapted you are to the heat, you may drink some water um, to try to stay hydrated. Definitely stay out of the sun, too. Lots of triathletes have a gel or two at this point. Uh, you may have a gel at the shore or at the beach before jumping in the water. That may be a good idea. Uh, also, usually 20 to 30 minutes before the swim, I will have the sudden urge to go to the bathroom. And I'm not just talking about pee. Uh, I'm lucky in this respect because somehow my body tends to want to just empty my digestive system, which is exactly what you want before a race. Try to do that if you can. Now to the swim. Let's all agree that you won't be eating anything on the swim. Now, if you're anything like me, you may be drinking something on the swim, but that'll be totally by accident. Anyway, after your 1.9 kilometers is over and you're up on the beach, what do you do? Well, the answer is you go to the bike and you get on the bike, meaning you don't eat anything in transition one. Don't waste time there. It's, a, it's totally not the right approach uh, because you could have all the food loaded up on your bike and you could be out there making headway and eating at the same time. 
These days, many tri bikes have bento boxes where you can stash some gels. Uh, other people still like to tape into the top tube with, tube with electrical tape, which is fine too. I usually throw a few gels in my uh, in the pockets of my tri suit, in the back of my tri suit. I throw some gels back there, but those are just for backups. Uh, I also keep those in case um, I need them on the run later on, and usually I do. Uh, but I've also actually used them as backups. I've actually lost my bottle of fuel, and I've had to use those extra gels. So. The bike is where you will be able to most comfortably consume the most amount of food in the most comfortable way. Now I'm not saying you need to consume a whole buffet on the bike, I'm just saying that on the bike it is a lot easier to carry and eat or drink than it is on the run. Uh, okay, so how much? That's the question. Here's where you'll need to estimate your carbs, calories, and sodium per hour. Again, this is something you should have tested in the past. A race is no time to experiment with what you don't know, it's time to execute what you do know. So whether you're on a low carb diet or a more conventional kind of a low fat diet, I think you still want to carb up here. I think you still want to increase those carbs. Though the fat adapted guys indeed may be able to get through the bike ride on their own fuel, it may be wise even for them to add some carbs. Like as many as 90 or 100 per hour for me, who I like carbs. Um, so for two and a half hours, for example, that's up to 250 grams of carbs total spread out over the bike. Again, you should have tested this yourself. If you're a smaller athlete though, you may need 30 or 40 grams per hour. How about calories? Calories are important too. I shoot for as many as uh, two to 300 per hour, which is quite a lot, but I tend to have a pretty tough digestive system and I'm lucky that I don't get an upset stomach. But if you think your stomach is easily upset, or maybe if you're very fat adapted and you don't need to rely on calories that you consume from external sources, you may be able to dial that way back. Again, this is something you should have tested in advance. Um, so if you can bring solid foods, not just liquids or gels, but something that you can actually chew on and eat, uh, it may be more pleasant. That's awesome. M most people really have less risk of stomach distress or GI distress by adding some solid foods and it's definitely more pleasant but it's also more complex it's more logistically tricky carrying around a whole bunch of solid food next up is my favorite thing sodium now um, in cool races this may not really be such a big deal you may not need all that sodium but in the scorching heat of Southeast Asia where I race uh, it's critical that you replace your lost electrolytes, specifically sodium, as well as possible. This is where things like precision hydration, element, you can, are all uh, critical. These are all sodium supplements. Uh, precision hydration has 750 milligrams of sodium per tablet. Element has uh, 1,000 just in this pack, and uh, uh, UCAN has 300. They're all great products. I use them all, I love them all. Um, see what works for you, what tastes best for you. One thing about precision hydration is it uses sodium citrate so you can't taste the salt. Element on the other hand is salt so you can taste it. So the benefit here is that once you stop liking the taste of salt you've probably had enough. Whereas with pH you may continue to drink in excess of what you require because your body can't tell you when to stop, uh, when that salt appeal goes away. But a word of caution, if you're in a cool climate, don't underestimate what heat can do to you. So if you're training in a cool climate and you're racing in a hot climate, and I've seen it lots of times, I've seen guys from the UK come to Malaysia and just get destroyed uh, because they're not used to it, they're not used to the climate, and they're not properly uh, fueling the right sodium that they need. So. Um, one way to figure this out and preempt this is if you can get a sodium test done. This is a simple and painless uh, test that measures how much sodium is in each liter of sweat. So it's how many milligrams of sodium you excrete per liter of sweat. The range can be pretty big. It can go from 500 milligrams to up to 1500 milligrams or even more. Uh, I'm unlucky. I'm at 1425. That is huge. So I lose a whole lot of sodium per liter of sweat. Um, so, but, but knowing this number makes, makes it less of a guessing game. So, um, but to know that, you also have to know how much sweat you lose. 
So to, to figure that out, what you got to do is you, you have to weigh yourself before you run, weigh yourself before you ride, and weigh yourself after. And do this many, many times. Don't, do, don't just do it once. Um, but uh, what, what's going to happen is the difference in weight in kilograms is the number of liters that you've lost. So if I lost three kilograms, I lost three liters. Um, then divide that by an hour and figure out your hourly losses. So, uh, like I said, it can vary uh, very considerably depending on things like diet, hydration, rest, temperature, climate, pace, intensity. So many things can vary that number that one reading is not going to be sufficient to calculate your full, uh, the full picture. For example, if I find that I lose 1.5 liters of sweat on the bike in the heat where I'll be racing, let's say 75% humidity and 30 degrees Celsius, and I lose 1400 milligrams per liter of sweat, that comes out to a grand total of 2,100 milligrams of sodium per hour on the bike. It's likely to be higher on the run. And if I'm on the bike for two hours and 30 minutes, then I need 5,300 milligrams of sodium on the bike. Now, you can't quite replace all the sodium you lose, but almost. That means I'll try to bring around 5,000 to 5,300 milligrams of sodium on my bike. So I have a very easy way of calculating that, which I'll show you later on at the end of this video. Finally, water. I find it very nice um, to keep one bottle as pure water. So the hydration system on my bike, uh, I don't mix anything with it. I just keep it as pure water, and I, 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 ch I chase uh, my, my gels and my other things with that when I'm done. Then I refill it with a bottle, which I grab on the course, take the bottle, dump it in, and just refill that with water. So um, that's kind of how I do it. Uh, you'll find your own way. It may be different than mine. One point to note, it's good to know what energy drinks they're serving on the course or what hydration they're serving. Is it Gatorade? Is it something else? Is it something that you are okay with? Because it may not be something that you want. It may be something you're not used to. If it's something you've never tried, then my recommendation is do not try it. If it's something that you've been training with and you're comfortable with, then you're in luck that means they're going to be giving it to you. But I wouldn't rely on it. I never rely on these things because they may run out. They may, you may not be able to get the bottle. Whatever could happen, you better be prepared. You better be self-sufficient. You better bring all the fuel you need. That's my rule. So um, see what works for you. Um, in general, in terms of water, I try to go for one to one and a half liters of water uh, per hour. Uh, but again, you have to see what you need. Now to the place where things fall apart, and that's the run. Uh, at this, this, is, this is where you can make or break your race. Uh, like I said earlier, it's generally hard to carry very much food on the run. I tend to grab those few gels in T2 or T1 that I still have in my backup gels in my rear of my tri-suit uh, pockets. Um, but on a half, I won't usually bring any sodium on the run. In a full marathon or a full Ironman, I will. But in a half, I won't. Um, I can usually pop a few sodium tablets as I run, maybe um, grab them in T2, but I won't do it in T2. Uh, that's a waste of time. Do it while you run. So most important here is to go into the run fully fueled and not depleted. Make sure you've brought on enough nutrition, enough water, enough sodium, enough carbs, enough calories that you don't need to eat anymore or at least very much. Now depending on how you feel and how hot it is, you may be able to skip some aid stations on the run or you may have to grab water or drinks there. If there's any time I do walk, it's during the aid station. It's way easier to drink while you walk than while you run, and this kind of kills two birds with one stone. If you need a break or need to bring your heart rate down and you want to walk, do it at the aid stations where you may also need to slow down to drink anyway. If you're in a hot climate, um, then, you know, it's a concern. But if you're not in a hot climate, just drink according to thirst. Otherwise, keep hydrated no matter what. Okay, so as I mentioned, the run is where many people struggle. Part of that is because all the fluids, all the foods in your stomach are agitated. You've got that big glob of stuff shaking around. And it's very hard to digest. At this point, you cannot tolerate too much food and drink. Um, you can overdo it, and I have overdone it. I've tried to take on too much. My paranoia got the worst of me, and I took on too much, and I had this big bloated stomach during the run, and it's definitely not pleasant. Once again, the key here is to have tested it. So, how many runs have you done after a long ride in your training where you tested your hydration and, nutri and your nutrition? 
you should have a good idea of how many carbs, calories, or how much sodium you need here. Well, it's impossible to replace everything that you lose, especially calories. You should not fall too far behind or you'll likely end up with a very upset stomach on the run and you'll probably need that porta potty I was talking about earlier and at a very inconvenient moment. Once the race is over, I'll always grab some water uh, and of course I'll grab a beer if available. Um, and then of course to promote recovery, I always try to consume some sodium and some protein. Most of us don't have a hard time finding the biggest, best lunch around. Uh, typically I don't find greasy hamburgers too appealing, but there's nothing like a big cheeseburger with fries at the end of a half iron man. Failing that, you could always take on some sodium supplements and a protein shake maybe, and of course, try to replace all that lost fluid in the form of water, especially in those hot races. Now, finally, to the tool I was telling you about. My website, ironmanhacks.com, has a nutrition calculator that you can use to plan your race day nutrition. So the way it works is you enter your bike or run duration, in this case, two hours and 30 minutes. Then, I'm choosing 250 calories per hour, 1,425 milligrams of sodium per hour, because that's how much I lose, and 90 grams of carb. Now here, I'm searching for the foods that I have. Hammer Perpetuum, I love that stuff. Some pure gels, I use those too. And let's go for some precision hydration, 1,500. At this point, I just hit calculate nutrition, and I see the servings. Now here's where I change the number of servings of each of these until the sums add up to uh, green figures. So they could be yellow or they could be orange, but when they're green, they're within 10% of my target values or the numbers that I put up above that I should be hitting per hour. So you just play around with this until you figured out those numbers and then you can download the results. You can use this calculator for free on ironmanhacks.com or if you want it in your phone as an app, you can download the Iron Hacks, not Iron Man Hacks, but Iron Hacks calculator app for just 99 cents. We have both Android and uh, iOS. It has more than 200 popular foods and supplements in it, but if it doesn't have what you're looking for, you can add it yourself. So if you really want to bring pizza on your bike, you can put in the pizza, put in the nutritional information, and it will show up there. Thanks a lot. If you have any comments, leave them below and I will respond. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.